Can you touch on your relative experience and the opportunity ahead with Scout and Presearch? Yeah, absolutely. I have a long history with search. I also have a long history with an attraction to difficult projects. And frankly, being part of a search engine in the landscape dominated by Google is a is a difficult project. A lot of people wouldn't even try to do that. But there's huge good reasons to, to be doing that. And that's part of what I'm I'm interested in is 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 fighting that fight, being a part of an alternative search engine. Uh, my background, I worked for Google myself, actually, a long time ago. And I've been you know, in and out of the search engine for 15 years, something like that. The future has gotten brighter all along the way with that. You know, when, when I first started trying to be part of bucking the system a little bit, you know, people would just literally look at you like you were from Mars for even, you know, suggesting such a thing. But now more and more people are, are making traction with this. We're certainly making traction with it. And uh, that's my experience and kind of why I'm here. So. Secondly, can you tell us a little bit about our road to a deflationary pre? Right. And for, for people who, you know, are focused on the search engine end of things, there are all sorts of reasons to use pre-search. But there's another aspect to it, and that, it, and that is that it issued a token. And these people who run the nodes, the community members who run the nodes that I mentioned, they earn tokens. They're paid in tokens on a hourly basis. They accumulate those tokens in, in an account. And so there's another financial ecosystem, if you will, built around the token. And before we took over, the team that preceded us, they were selling massive numbers of tokens in the marketplace to fund the company because they had no revenue from anything else. And of course, users loved it because they were getting you know, ad-free search for free. And who wants to give that up? But you can only do that for so long and you run out of money. They ran out of money and they were starting to sell these tokens, which debased the tokens and it just turned into a mess. It's one of the reasons why they asked me to take over. They were selling about 20 million tokens a month to finance the company. Obviously, the token price is very low. We are still paying out tokens to the, the node runners, as we call them. We've harmonized a lot of different things, a lot of different reasons. It's down to a little over 3 million per month which is a fraction of what was being paid before. And we still have literally years of tokens left if we, want it, if we wanted to. But we don't want to just pay them out. We're, we're working, we're focusing on closing the loop, as I call it, increasing the demand for these tokens. So since we're now making money, we're doing what we call takeover ads, ads as our beautiful ads that just occupy the background. No pop-ups, nothing that gets in the way. Very, very attractive. Some of these you would print and put up as a poster. And we completely control them. There are no pixels. There's absolutely nothing that affects anybody's privacy. No profiling, anything. What we're doing is taking some of the revenue that we're now earning for the first time and applying it to buying some of the tokens. Plus, we are launching ad-free search. We just moved that up, made it a priority. People can do the same thing. We have a paywall set up in pre, other crypto, or in fiat, you know, credit card, and that we're expanding as well. We have a plan that'll probably take the better part of a year. We turned the token from inflationary to deflationary. We've made massive progress. We've dropped the inflation by 85%, but we want to drop it down to zero, and we want to make the token slightly deflationary. That will just slowly over time drive the price of the token up. The company could run in theory without the token, except we lose the nodes. So the token is part and parcel of the company as it becomes more profitable on the takeover ads. It also directly helps the tokenomics of the pre-token. And I guess that would be a good segue to go into our keyword staking models. Would you like to touch a little bit on that? Yes, yeah, so the keyword staking is a great way for somebody who has a website to get the word out about their website. The keyword staking is a way for you to place an ad on pre-search. Most of the search engines, and especially the big ones that everybody knows about, they make their money by ads. Well, the interesting thing about the keyword ads, it's a way for our community members to make money off of the ads. Let's say you're personally a, a runner, you love running, you've got a website that talks about running, all the different shoes and maybe you, you know, maybe do reviews of shoes, but you also have links to Nike and Adidas and, and various other shoe manufacturers where if somebody goes to that link and they buy something, then you're going to earn some money off of that. So you want people to go to their website. 
you have to acquire some pre, you put it on the pre a platform, and then you select your word or a phrase. So it could be shoes to be more specific. Maybe you, you want to just say running shoes. So you do that phrase. You allocate some pre or stake some pre against that phrase or word. If you stake the most pre against that word or phrase, then your ad will be shown on pre-search. And when you're done, you can unstake it and that pre is still yours. But that's how you can advertise a website on pre-search. And if you do it right, you can make some good money off of that. And so there's, we have, we have thousands of people staking different keywords on pre-search to bring people to their website to earn money from the pre-search ecosystem. I can you also touch on our data infrastructure and how do we walk the tightrope between utilizing the data and protecting our privacy? Yeah, definitely. We are a, a privacy focused search engine. So what does that mean when it comes to like me and analytics? How can I do analytics with data that doesn't exist or how is it? I was curious about that when I first started working with them and it's worked out better than I expected. We don't store the search terms and anything like location and uh, device info and things like that, they're all stored in a way where they're not connected. So I'm not able to track individual users and how they're, where they are, what they're searching. You can't track people, but I can see general trends in general areas. I can see general like OSs and, and device types, you know, if they're on a mobile or desktop. I can see kind of those basic things. It helps us to identify bots and, and all that. But you can say like on a macro level, I can't I can't look deep into into it, but I can see kind of more general trends and getting as much um, insight as I can from the data that we store and the way we store it. And could you also speak to our approach to balancing the user experience with monetization, ensuring advertisers reach targeted audiences effectively while maintaining pre-search's core values of privacy? Sure. So in search, you know, the main way to monetize is through advertising. And you can only make money in advertising if users click on your ads. And that's why there's a multi-billion dollar industry devoted just to figuring out how to get users to click on your ads and how do they do that? Tracking, analyzing. Uh, that's why, you know, if you search one time for pregnancy tests, you're going to be getting ads for cribs for the rest of your life. But at pre-search, we don't do that, right? We don't do any tracking. We don't know anything about our users. How do we monetize? Well, we actually have, and this is one of the core successes of the business, we have higher than industry standard click-through rates. And the way that we're able to achieve that is a couple of ways, really. One, we choose advertisers or products that our users would genuinely be interested in, so they want to click on the ads. And the other is our, our PTAs, our pre-search takeover ads, which gives advertisers the ability to make beautiful, immersive, engaging ads that our users want to click on. And the proof is in the pudding. We have high click-through rates without any tracking. This allows us to effectively monetize while staying true to our core value of privacy. Awesome. Well, I thank you for your time. And pre-searchers, I think that's all the time we have today. And we will see you next time.